And so you ask the Holy Spirit to confirm in you if this is truly a word from God to you, but this is what I believe he has to say to you tonight. My sweet daughter, you have believed the lies of the enemy too long. This was never my plan for you. I am setting you free tonight, free from the prison in which you've been held captive. Mine is the only voice you need to hear, indeed the only voice that speaks truth. I declare you beautiful. I declare you precious. I say to you, arise and step into your rightful place as my daughter, the daughter of the king. Not because you've earned the right to be my daughter, but because I've chosen you. Not all have been chosen, but I've known you before the creation of the world. I said to myself, yes, she will be mine. She will be grafted into my family. I'm adopting her. I set my eyes on you. I noticed you before you were even born. I wanted you. You are loved. You are wanted. You belong. I have great, even magnificent plans for you beyond your wildest dreams. But you must listen to my voice from now on. Reject the voice of the liar. Listen to me, my daughter, straining to hear me whispering your name. I love you. You are my delight. When I say your name, I smile. Your name. Your name. Your name. I love your name. Period. In uh, John 8, 44, Speaking about the devil, Jesus says, He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. That's what he's all about. And I found out a fascinating thing this morning as I was reading. Someone um, sent me a, a new Messianic Jew Bible. Anyway, it had a lot of the um, original Hebrew words, and so I was kind of studying like the original Hebrew words for a lot of things. Did you know the actual Hebrew meaning of the word Satan is accuser? Isn't that interesting? That's the meaning, the original Hebrew word Satan is translated accuser. Think about that. How has he been accusing you? How has he been accusing you? What has he been whispering to you over and over again? I know he's been whispering something. And here's the deal. Over the years, the, the months, the, week, you know, the weeks, the months, the years, we've heard these whispers, these accusations. We repeat them. Sometimes it's people that say these things to us. Sometimes it's the enemy whispering to us. Sometimes we're saying it to ourselves. But these things just start stacking up. For instance, you might hear, unloved, right? And you've been repeating that over and over again. I'm unlovable. No one loves me. I'm, I'm, I'll never be loved. And in order to get rid of this, we have to actually replace it with something, right? So what do we replace it with? What is the truth? The truth is you are loved, you are the beloved, right? So I'm just right, beloved. And then what happens is I have to start stacking things over here. I need to, I need to have a higher stack on this side than on this side. So there's also this little accusation, you're alone. You're alone. You'll always be alone. You're going to be alone, alone, alone. Is that true? No. He'll never leave us. He will never leave us. So then I stack this one. He will never leave over here. My pile's still a little higher on this side. So this is still my identity still over here because I have a huge pile. Imagine this just going to the ceiling and beyond. All the lies that have stacked up. How about this one? You won't be able to. You won't be able to. You won't be able to. Is that true? No. Oh, that's right. You can do all things. Apparently it's hard to hold a microphone and a marker and do the whiteboard. <laughs> you can do all. I'm just going to write. You know what the rest of the verse is. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you, right? So my past is starting, it's starting to get e more even. But you get the idea, then you just keep on going. You're too messed up, you're just too messed up. No, that's just not it. it. You know, actually, I think when you become a believer, in fact, I know that when you become a believer, actually, I'm gonna just write this in my messy writing here. I'm gonna write, 
I'm not too messed up. I, I'm actually a new creation, actually. Oh. So I'm just gonna put that over here. Oh, how about this one? You can't change. You can't. No. I mean, do you see what I mean? We start, we start erasing these. We start piling up. Oh, you don't belong. No, that's not true. I'm an adopted family. We've got it. You don't have value. No, I'm going to erase that one. We're going to have to start making this pile be bigger than this pile. Do you get the drift? That's what we have to do. And it's really, really helpful to proclaim the truth out loud. Out loud. Proverbs 18.21, the power of life and death are in the tongue. I feel like God has shown me that we need to take the truth from his word and insert our name into those Bible verses that are the truth. And we need to start proclaiming that for ourselves. You know, in the past, at Squadron of Sisters, we've often prayed Bible verses and inserted our husband's name. And that's been very, very awesome. And we've had answers to prayer by just praying these specific Bible verses for our husband, but now it's time to minister to our soul and to tr speak truth to our own souls. There's something so powerful about speaking out the truth with your name in there. I did this at home and I have to say it was almost a little uncomfortable. I mean, it actually was to start saying my name linked with really precious thoughts. It was like a little jarring at first because my pile was so, so big over here. And so this was like jarring almost. But I'm going to start saying these things every day so that it becomes more of my identity. And it's not jarring, it's just the truth, if you know what I mean. And this is the truth. So as we're, going to, we're going to be going through a bunch of Bible verses and inserting our name in these promises. And it might feel a little weird, but this, God's word is the truth. Amen? God's word is the truth. And so you can insert your name in these Bible verses, and it, you're just proclaiming truth to your soul. His word is truth. 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture is God-breathed. John 17.17, 17, your word is truth. John 8.32, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. So what we're going to do tonight is going to be huge. We're going to write a love letter to ourselves from the Lord. We're going to write a love letter, a real love letter to ourselves from the Lord. But we're not going to be making it up. We're going to use actual Bible verses, inserting our name, and we're going to write a letter to ourselves. And the letter's going to say, Dear Debbie. Kind of weird. No. Dear Denise. Right? Dear Melissa. Dear Kim, we're going to, and then you're going to just start inserting your name, and you're going to write yourself a love letter from the Lord. And you know what you're going to do, after, and you're going to pick out some verses. I'm going to, I have them all picked out for you. Um, and you can choose from them, because I, but you might have some of your own favorites, and then you, you know, ones that really speak to you, and, and you know, look it up in your Bible app or whatever you need to do. Write your own love letter using actual Bible verses, and then you're going to speak it out loud. And you know what? As you hear the truth spoken to yourself about yourself with your precious name inserted, it's going to start to change how you feel about who you are. You're going to start to assume your right identity. And here's the deal. You're going to need to say this perhaps 365 days straight. You're going to need to read this love letter out loud to yourself every morning. Because see, you have this big stack over here. And you need to start peeling off the layers. And the only way you're going to do that is by replacing the lies with the truth and proclaiming it to yourself over and over and over again. Plus, the benefit of this, there's a bonus to this. You actually memorize scripture. 